हेलो एंड वेलकम टू शरद चंद्र आई एस अकेडमी वेरो टीम्स आर आर मिशन दिस इज यथार्थ हेयर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट प्रोजेक्ट मौसम द मेरी टाइम सिल्क रोड एंड इंडिया नेवल पास्ट द न्यूज आई थिंक दैट आई हैव पिक दिस फ्रॉम द हिंदू एंड दैरिंग से वॉट इज द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड नेवीज न्यू प्रोजेक्ट टू रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट एन एंशियंट स्टिच शिप ऑल राइट सो वी नीड टू सी दैट वॉट दिस न्यूज टेल्स so the news says that once the ship is ready so which ship we are talking about this ancient stitched ship so once this ship is ready the voyage voyage means a journey with a team of 13 indian navy crew from odisha's katak so we are talking about odisha that means we are talking about the eastern coast will be sent to bali in indonesia so we will be landing in the bali in november 2025 officials say that the voyage will be part of initiative to revive and honor india's old maritime trade routes so we need to remember that which dynasty or which kingdoms existed this site so they were chola chera and pandya so we're talking about the chola kings so chola kings had established uh, the maritime dominance in the indian ocean and had various trade that means economic as well as cultural relations with sri vijaya or indonesia so we'll be seeing this if you remember the exam paper from 2022 a question about vietnam came its capital is hanoi We'll be seeing this in this lecture also. So please do not ignore such countries, especially which are located in the Indian Ocean region or Southern China Sea. Questions have been coming again and again from these parts. All right. So the news is that in another move among the series of steps taken by the government to reclaim India's long lost heritage in different sectors, the centre now plans to revive the ancient maritime heritage. The Ministry of Culture has recently joined hands with the Indian Navy and Goa based Hodi Innovations to reconstruct an ancient stitched ship. So we'll see what is this ancient stitched ship. Reminiscent of the ships, reminiscent means a memory or remain. Some remain that gives us a memory. That sailed the oceans on India's ancient maritime trade routes as many as 2000 years ago. That means around 300 AD. sorry 30 ad so the project the project entails collaboration across several ministries and departments while the indian navy is overseeing the ship's design and construction and would also be sailing the ship along ancient maritime trade routes so the ministry of culture has fully funded the project what do we need to see here important points the ministry of shipping and external affairs will be supporting the project in its execution stage that means if we see the modern period as compared to an ancient period now we are requiring how many ministries the ministry of culture the ministry of external affairs the navy the central governments some other ministries so we can also compare the administrative system to do the same thing in a modern period all right okay so the stitching work the project was approved by national implementation committee chaired by home minister amit shah in december 2022 So stitching work will be undertaken by a team of traditional ship rais led by Babu Sankaran. Okay, this name is pretty famous. So you can just note down this name. Considered an expert in the stitched ship technique. As per officials, this age-old technique involves shaping the wooden planks using the traditional steaming method to conform to the shape of the hull. Each plank will be stitched to another using cords or ropes. sealed with a combination of coconut fiber resin and fish oil akin to the ancient indian ship building practice the project is set to cost 9 crore and is expected to take around 22 months to complete so this is just the basic uh, thing let me show you a picture here this is the stitching technique as you can see many sutures here or the stitches all right so they just work uh, 
in order to keep these planks composed and the steaming is a technique where a wood plank which is of any shape let's say is, is steamed and warmed so it becomes somewhat loose and then shaped whatever or however you wanted to shape it like all right so you can see some of the steamed wooden plank shape here and here also all right so this we have already seen this ppt is just repeated here's also one more uh, stitched ship So Babu Sankaran has been roped in for the project since he is considered as a master craftsman and has recently built ships using the stitched technique of the Gulf countries. In the Gulf countries, the most famous of them is the Javel of Muscat, built for Oman, which sailed from Oman to Singapore. So this is a rather long journey. We are uh, just a second. So here we are uh, doing going through Antarctic as well as the Pacific Ocean. This whole is Pacific only. Here, Arabic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, not Antarctic, sorry. All right, so this is rather a long journey. All right, and it has various stops also here and here. So we can assume that the conditions would be completely as are faced by the modern ships. And still, the ships are so well built that it uh, faced and successfully reached here to Singapore. Now we want to reach downwards to the Indonesia here and this is what the mission is. So once the ship is ready, the voyage will be seen of 13 Indian Navy crew from Odisha's Katak will be sent to Bali in Indonesia to coincide with Karthik Purnima. Alright, so this is also an initiative of the Ministry of Culture. The month of Karthik is in winters, January, February time. The earliest known example of a Suen boat, Suen means which is the stitched basically, is 40 meters long funerary boat in Egypt dating back to 2500 BC. So how they used to do the funerals in Egypt in earlier times, they would just uh, build a boat and let it go in the Nile river and it's supposed to be some royal. Alright and they'll put a burning thing here then shoot an arrow and it will burn the boat eventually through the Nile River. <clears throat> so later finds in other parts of the world include some early Greek ships in Finland, Russia, Kerala, Karelia and Estonia. Small tune boats have been constructed more recently until the 1920s. So after 1920s what happened? Industrial revolution took a good phase and steel production was increased. That's when ship building started in its modern phase. Right, let's come to the project Mossam now. So officials say that initiative is synergy with Ministry of Culture's project Mossam, which aims to reconnect and re-establish communication links between countries of Indian Ocean world. So basically this is against a move of China. See the Indian Ocean as well as the South China Sea, it's a constant battleground between India and China, supported by a few other countries. So when we read this topic, we see that one way forward is to establish connections with other countries in the South China Sea. So this is one of these way forwards. So you must remember Project Mossam and what we are doing in this. So in fact, initiated by Indian Project Mossam aims to build maritime cultural connections with 39 countries bordering the Indian Ocean. So this is also one great move in way forward. You can write this. So as a UPSC candidate, what I would suggest you that you must have some static topics through the year built into one of your notebooks. So it is very natural that one of the topics will be the Indian Ocean. So whatever activities are happening in and around Indian Ocean by the Indian government or any other entity, so these must be noted on a single page. This is easier if you do it digitally so that you can add it and add notes anytime. So as per the experts in ASI, naval trade on the Indian Ocean dates back to 3rd century BC, when residents of the Indus Valley opened maritime trading with Mesopotamia, Egypt, East Africa and the Roman Empire. 
through these maritime trade networks many goods were exchanged so this is a very common theme common question in the ivc that were were what were ivc exchanging most of it was cotton ink silk many artifacts gems and stones spices wood grain gems textile stones so in trade in turn the facilitated the exchange of religions culture and technology so many people also were transported to here and there many ideas related to maths philosophy they came into india and went out of india also so contributing to the expansion of buddhism christianity and hinduism they say so this was in later stages this is first ad this is way before that all right along uh, 1000 bc or something and buddhism we all know that uh, just in the vedic era and later vedic era so project mausam is said to be india's answer to the maritime silk road of china so this is a, as i told you already that all activities that india is trying to do in the south china sea or indian ocean are an answer to the china's moves in the same region so project mausam entails 39 countries and this is one of the countries so what is china's move here china's move is maritime silk road so china is also trying to revive its past that okay i was also a big country with many relations not only you ruled the indian ocean so india plans to move for unesco to award trans sectional uh, transnational heritage status to project mausam which was launched by india at the 38th world heritage session at doha in june 2014 Several countries, including the UAE, Qatar, Iran, Myanmar, and Vietnam, have expressed great interest in this multifaceted cultural project. So now let us see about the Maritime Silk Road of China. So when we already know what is the Silk Road, so silk is a fiber, and it comes from a cocoon. So this is a butterfly larva. and the larva feeds on some leaves and builds a cocoon around itself so that cocoon is uh, boiled and the larva is killed and these fibers are obtained these are known as silk the silk was discovered in china a queen or a princess one discovered it and it was kept secret for many many years hundreds and thousands of years possibly so after and during that time the china grew very rich because of export of silk the road that it used to export silk used to go through north of india that time these boundaries did not exist of course the empire was rather bigger and extend to any other countries all right but there was this common road known as the silk road which would go towards the europe from china but there was also a maritime silk road that china would take in order to export its silk through the indian ocean So this is a part of China's spring, uh, sorry, string of pearls project, and India's reply is Project Mausam. So these countries have shown a great interest. Let us also see what is the maritime silk routes. So this is a uh, China's the silk route, the original silk route that it's it is trying to build, and as I told you, it's going from north of India. there was kushan empire which ruled these areas in the past time when they became very uh, rich and very powerful here because of controlling of these routes all right so china uh, created these recreated actually these uh, points such as hanoi the capital of vietnam fuzhou in china and china is trying to create this maritime route jakarta indonesia so indonesia these countries sometimes let's say indonesia they benefit from both china and india because of their location so they also try to take advantage of their positions but as india we have to build relations with them in order to safeguard our trade and dominance in the indian ocean region otherwise china you know they are building military islands they are populating other countries with their cultural invasion and other things but always remember these countries such as moscow the rotterdam venice in italy athens in greece nairobi in kenya and colombo in sri lanka and sri lanka is very close to us again bangladesh is also very 
close to us and it's supporting china all right so these are some uh, threats here this is the uh, one belt one road obor in 2023 also one question came from uh, this uh, project in the prelims that uh, one country in the china kinming is uh, joined to kolkata by some highway so that was not true all right so obor you can read and there are many uh, points here such as basra in iraq then there is the khambad way of khambad in gujarat kollam in kerala sri lanka that the china plans to connect itself with but uh, they are not being accomplished all right but still question can be asked okay don't leave this topic completely okay moving further so 21st century maritime silk road is sea route part of belt and road initiative which is chinese strategic initiative to increase investment and foster collaboration across the historic silk route the maritime silk route essentially runs from chinese coast to south via hanoi in vietnam to jakarta in indonesia singapore and kuala lumpur in malaysia through the strait of malacca malacca strait i hope you all remember and know then via colombo in sri lanka towards southern tip of india via male in maldives to the east african mozamba mozambique and there to djibouti then through the red sea via the suez canal to the mediterranean sea then via the haifa istanbul turkey and athens greece to upper adriatic region of the northern italian hub of thraste with its international free port and its rail connection to central europe and north sea so this is a complete plan and strategy that china wants to do and it has been doing very successfully except for including india all right the cpec or china pakistan economic corridor is also an extension to the proposed silk road okay let us now see what is the connection with indonesia why are we doing the indonesia thing so during the reign of rajendra chola 1 as i told you about the chola empire which mostly controlled this region and his successors rajendra chola 1 sorry raj raja chola 1 and rajendra chola 1 we rajendra chola and kulotunga chola 1 the chola armies invaded sri lanka here the maldives and part of southeast asia like malaysia indonesia southern thailand of sri vijay empire in the 11th century okay we are talking about about 980 to 1180 or even till around 1150 ad so this is our connection with indonesia we not only had cultural ties but we also directly ruled there our ancestors this is a one map of the chola influence and empire so these were the trade routes which we want to recreate this is the malacca strait as you all know all right and this is very busy strait of the world this is the chola empire so chola empire was spread through the modern states of uh, andhra pradesh karnataka kerala and tamil nadu and this is the full extent of the chola empire later on earlier there were more kingdoms like cheras and pandyas all right so this was gangai konda chola puram and they went upside even till the uh, vengi kalinga so their influence was in this region also and pengu khmer rouge here this uh, <coughs> indonesia thailand this side was also the chola influence was there so this is what we need to remember and recreate that our indian influence was there in this uh, south china sea and indian ocean okay so just a second so now we need to see how to make notes out of these things okay there's one strategy that i've been meaning to tell you since a long time that whenever we are reading the newspaper so we must create at least 30 pages you can add other pages to all these pages so one is national news okay like this you can create short notes in a text box such as project mausam so connect to indonesia reminiscence of the chola empire and this one map is also uh, sorry one note also there about the bali jatra so bali jatra is a fair or mela which you can say so it's celebrated in the katak of odisha and uh, it was uh, one reminiscence of this chola thing same the trade routes okay so these are some points you can add into your notes as well as uh, for each state you must create at least 3 to 4 pages for each state such as let's say you create one page for chatisgarh one page for madhya pradesh so any special news that you find that it is good for upsc level okay then you can just add it into these pages and revise at the time of the exam same with international okay you can create a separate page for international current affairs so always maintain uh, notes of current affairs not uh, 
only subject wise like science and tech or environment current affairs not like this but also maintain them state wise as well as international and national wise so this will help you a lot this will give you a different mind frame in order to revise so that's about today's lecture this is yatharthi signing off i'll see you in the next lecture very soon in that we will learn how to read a newspaper and uh, i'll be back with you have a good day study well see you